sidetracked really easily. And some of you, you ever see it? And hopefully not during my sermons. People want to know why I actually write out my sermons. Because I, I don't need to, but I do write out my sermons. It's to make sure we get done in 20 minutes or less. All right? Because otherwise it might be a long Sunday morning. All right. Well, what we're going to do is we are going to take the sheet and we are going to uh, cover some area here. So the first thing I want you to do is uh, we need to break into groups. So I would like you to maybe just get in. Uh, you know, you guys can work together here, but maybe you guys serve as one group right here. And then maybe in the next row, we can have you into two groups and the following row into two groups. All right. And I want you to just use your catechism, pages 15 and 16 which is where at the bottom you'll see the beginning of the first article and Luther's explanation of what does this mean and the top of page 16. And I want you to go through questions one through three in your group, but you don't have a lot of time, right? So you really got to stay on track, all right? So in your group, read Luther's first article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning, and then answer number one, two, and then there's a bulleted point, and number three. So, all right, have at it. You guys, oh, any questions? Yeah. All right. You said 16, right? 15 and 16. Yeah, it's actually on the top of that page, too, to remind you. So, yeah, page 15 and 16. Bottom of page 15, top of page 16. All right, we can go for it. You understand why that's so hard. Science world, they are looking very hard at the life that's on it because what some of the most well known scientists claim is that life was seeded in our scientific. Oh, I am, I am. It was seeded in our heart, which means that aliens had actually planted in science. So that's why alien life is a big topic in science. So here's my Pastor, we need tables. Yes, I we do. So. Just use your books. Maybe. I write I more books. Your, I see. I broke like five five That is sad. It really was sad. I don't know how it happened. I can't jump in. Wait, what are you going to do? So, you got a I went to a nail salon when my dad and stepmom got married. I don't put my mom Oh, get it.
Oh, that's no. Yeah, that that's a theory that aliens seeded life here on Earth. From what seed life on Earth? Yeah, that's the question. I still can't answer. Where did it all come from? Question: Where did it come from? That's the unanswerable question. Where belief comes into why? But then when we hear the word alien too, sometimes we're just talking about alien life, which means some cell from uh, somehow from another planet made its way here, maybe on a meteor, or, you know. So no, that's considered alien life as well. But I believe Titan has life on a Saturn's moons. It is possible it yeah. has an atmosphere. Travel there. Katie, is that an ancient okay, alien know. planet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got about three minutes. It's a moon. I love how she was just so serious about it. Like, it's a moon. <laughs> Plus his reaction to it, like, what? Yeah, honey. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're still more than one. Yes. <laughs> you have me. You will help you with this. But that's not what it says. It says, does this mean that? No, something bad, bad things happen in the world. We just go to this to help. But it's all our Okay, first thing I want you to do is right now, I want you to make sure you open your catechisms to page 15 and 16. Okay? 
because the first article at the bottom of page 15 where it says the first article and under that what's the topic? Creation. Creation. Okay? And then the article itself, which is from the Apostles' Creed, is in, in uh, darkened words. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Now, the, what does this mean is written by Martin Luther, where he was trying to, again, use this. He wanted people to have something very simple in their household uh, that they could use as a teaching tool because they didn't have Bibles. They didn't have Bibles. The Bibles were just starting at that time. Uh, you just had the printing press going and everything else. Uh, most people were not well educated, so he wanted something simple, <coughs> excuse me, which would be a book of questions and answers. That's what a catechism is. It's a book of questions and answers. And he covered six main areas. One of those areas was the Apostles' Creed, which was a traditional statement of faith, a I believe statement that was summed up from teachings of the Bible. So what he did was, in between each article, each section, he said, okay, well, here's what this... This means, when it says, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, he said, what does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. Now keep in mind this was a man writing this at a time in history where disease was prevalent. Horrible diseases were running rampant. They did not have the vaccines. They did not have antibiotics. Any of that stuff. And yet he was still saying that God defends him against all danger and guards and protects him from all evil. How could Luther write that when his very own child died at a very young age. What do you think? That's exactly it. So we are being protected and preserved in a manner that even goes far beyond just our physical well-being. We do pray to God that he will protect us physically too, uh, but at the same time it's more so preserve and protect us from all the real harm that can exist, right? So I think it's a both and if that makes sense. All right, we're asking for the same thing. We can have that confidence in God, but we should never be shaken if something bad happens to us because God is still in charge, and at the end of the day, I mean like the real day, like the end of our life day, we know that he has kept his promise, and we will get to be in paradise. Okay? And then he goes on, he says, all this he does out of a fatherly. I love the way that Luther worded that, that he talks about God as his Father. Fatherly, divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, is it, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. And then Luther classically ends each section with, this is most certainly true. I have no doubt about this. Especially for a guy who, again, lost his own child at a very early age and then suffered from some serious ailments himself. And he was saying, I know it's true. I know it's true. Okay? So, very quickly, it's going to have to be very quickly, um, before we take our break, let me just turn this off real quick if I don't want it ringing right one I speak. There we go. Uh, what did you put then uh, for number one? According to this explanation, what are at least ten things that God gives? What were some of the things that you saw that God gives? Body, soul, eyes, ears, clothes, shoes, food. All right, basically all those things that were listed, right? Could we add to that list? Yeah, we could. All right. So like Kurt Wunzelberger could add things like he gives me the Green Bay Packers. No. <laughs> no. These, are all no. Shameless no. These are all no. good gifts. No. <laughs> no. Unless you're a fan of another team. Yeah. Yes. You could. There you go. It would be, it'd be a lot of stuff, wouldn't it? All right. How about number two? Why does God give us these things and even go so far to defend and protect us against all evil? Uh, that's what we just talked about. We just covered that one. So really the, the question is, does this mean that nothing bad will ever happen? And we've said, no, it doesn't mean that we won't get sick. It doesn't mean, but we know who our protector and preserver is. You know, you think about uh, King David. King David was, oh, is this, this man's life was being threatened, even by his king, King Saul. 
King Saul was trying to hunt him down, and David would write things like, the Lord is my rock and my redeemer, my shelter. He would say things about God like that even while he was being hunted for his very life. And then his own son turns on him, Absalom begins to chase his father down when Absalom wants to become king. And so he's got all this stuff happening, and David will write some of the most beautiful psalms, confessing God as his protector and as the one who spares him, even while he was going through all that turmoil. Because that's how confident we can be in God that at the end of the day, it's still, it, we win, because Jesus has won for us. And how about number three? What is our response to our Heavenly Father for providing all these great basic needs and other blessings? Thank, praise, serve, and obey. There you go. We thank Him, we praise Him, and then did you notice? We also serve Him and, and obey Him. Those are, <coughs> it's our reaction to God's great grace and mercy. We wanna, it's not like we, we have to do anything to earn His favor, but now we're just so happy. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, there are people uh, in the Bible, I was just reading about this the other day, there's a Shunammite woman who actually invites Elisha into her house. And it's fun to watch and read about this. This is in, uh, I'm blanking out exactly where at in, in the Old Testament. But anyway, um, they're there, and the Shunammite woman just wants to help him out. And then Elisha's like, what can I do for you? He was looking for something to help her out because they're so appreciative and thankful of one another, they want to just in response do good things for one another. And that's basically the way we are as we live out a response to what Christ has done. We just want to, we want to honor God. We want to do that. Now, when I say that, I know we don't always, but that's our response to his grace. That's what grace does, okay? All right, so after our break, we are going to roll. Okay, so I'm going to give you a seven-minute break, and if you need to use the restrooms, they are, if you go out these doors to the left, and then we need the parents to go back with Craig, uh, he's going to share some things with you guys.